Hey, I'm Hunt, and this is Hunt on LSU, your channel for LSU Fighting Tiger football talk. Enjoy the video. We want you to leave a comment below, hit that like button, and subscribe right below the video. Enjoy. Shout out to the Jim's Firearms Hotline. Now chat with our guy Glenn West of Go 24-7. Glenn, how are you? I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that my flight doesn't get canceled on Friday, Hunt. But uh, other than that, we're we're good, and uh, I think there should be football on Sunday, which is always a good thing. It appears that way. Um, hopefully, everybody stays safe, and we know this this things can can sneak up and do some damage. But hopefully, everything is is all right. Um, you met with Brian Kelly yesterday with the media. Um, I'm imagining did some player interviews yesterday as well. What's the uh, what's the vibe around LSU football these days? Yeah, so we get player interviews today, actually. So uh, haven't talked with any players yet, but uh, Brian Kelly is very confident uh, about this group. I mean, I, I mean, they've given off a very confident, you know, just kind of eager momentum in terms of just just wanting to get this season started. And uh, you know, he talked a lot yesterday about just how much they prepared, how much better of a spot they're in than this time a year ago when they didn't know even some of the starters who were going to play the significant snaps. I mean. At this time, they were still figuring out what Harold Perkins' best way to get onto the field was last year, and so he didn't play much against Florida State last year. I'm going to be interested to see how that wrinkle uh, is now added into the fold of this of this matchup this year. So uh, there's just you know I mean, a lot of excitement with Week One. Everybody's you know starting from square one at zero and zero, and uh, this is about as uh, you know highly anticipated a, a Week One matchup that you could possibly have, and. Uh, the fact that they're going to get to be on the biggest stage on a Sunday night uh, is going to be a really cool thing to open the season with. So we're all excited. You mentioned that Josh Williams a little bit banged up. Um, it's been kind of a revolving door at running back. The depth is fine, so you're not like short on bodies, but just guys have, have missed some practice time. Now that we're inside game week, do you have any indication of to what that room kind of looks like and what a rotation could look like? Sure. Uh, I, I would imagine that Josh Williams plays. We talked to him last week, and he seemed like he was very uh, energetic about getting to week one. I think he's going to be good to go. Uh, he was listed as probable for the matchup, but uh, one guy that might not be out there out of that room is, is Armani Goodwin. Right. I think he's uh, listed as doubtful right now, so we'll see if he's able to suit up. But I've kind of always been of the opinion that when they're healthy and when at full strength, kind of the Noah Kane, Logan Diggs, Josh Williams trio – I think would handle a bulk of the, the carries in terms of running uh, plays. Uh, but I do think that guys like Josh Williams, Kevontre Bradford, those could be used kind of in passing down situations. I think both of those guys really showed us a lot this fall that they could be utilized in the passing game. I uh, would like to see them also kind of try to get Logan Diggs involved in that as well. Just didn't see a whole lot of them in the fall while the media was out there. So, uh, but we've heard so much about his versatility, but uh, I do think that Kane Williams and Diggs are kind of in line, I think, to get probably the bulk of the looks, uh, at least this first week here against Florida State. You think they'll be a good running team? I, I think so. I think they'll be improved. I don't I, I don't know if I'd go as far to say that they'll be a good or great running team. I, I think you still have to see it on the field. Um, I, I do think that the biggest improvement, that, and you know, just kind of going off of what Coach Kelly said yesterday that makes a ton of sense, is that the offensive line with the second year, of kind of everybody together, I think should really help the run game, open up more holes for those guys, even if they're not the most explosive players, um, you know, in terms of just creating uh, big runs on their own. I, I do think that there will be more holes open for those guys and that uh, LSU can feel a lot more confident about not leaning so heavily on Jade Daniels and his legs this year. I think they have a, enough guys to really make this an interesting rushing attack, and we'll see which kind of guys surface to the top. Do you expect a discernible difference in Jaden Daniels' game on Sunday than you saw last year? I don't know. I I, I, I imagine so. Um, they they spent all off season working with him on his aggression downfield. That's been something that obviously Jaden has really tried to mentally, I think, retool in his brain a little bit about being more creative with the football, pushing it downfield some. I I, I do think that you could see a few more explosive plays. Um, I don't know how much of the playbook they're going to open up here week one against Florida State. I think you have to have everything on the table for this first matchup with it being a top 10 uh, duel, but um, we'll see. I mean, I, I, I think that you know, there are certainly weapons here that can help help, help you. Um, Aaron Anderson, Chris Hilton, uh, Malik Neighbors, Brian Thomas Jr., these guys have 
all shown flashes this fall of being able to make those plays downfield and and, and even if they're not downfield plays, you know, catching short routes and turning them up for yards after the catch has been something that I know LSU has really tried to explore, creating uh, more ways in which that can happen as well. So um, it, it's all going to come down to number five, and if you know his willingness to kind of take a few chances, uh, we you know we we saw it at times during fall, but there were also some practices out there where you know they sell for the short and intermediate routes, which was fine. They were moving the ball downfield. Uh, I think that's probably point number one is that they were pretty consistent in moving the ball. Um, but they, you, you got to just wait and see. I mean, I honestly don't know uh, what kind of Jane Daniels we're going to get on, on Sunday. I gave you the over under on Aaron Anderson touches. That counts punt returns, but you got to return it. Kickoff returns, but you've got to return it. And then whatever he does on offense in the game for eight and a half, what would you take? Um, I, I would say probably a slightly over. I, I, I could see him getting the ball nine or ten times in this game. I, I really do think that they're going to try to get the ball in his hands, whether it's out of the backfield uh, on in the screen game. You know, they used him so much in the screen game during the fall. I think that is going to be something that really uh, they, they need to lean into this season as, as a way of creating explosive plays. I think just his, his change of direction is just so elite. Um, and then obviously the, the kickoffs and the punts, that'll probably, you would think at least get five or six, seven touches there between those two. Um, so yeah, I, I would imagine that they, they, they get him the ball, uh, you know, quite a bit, uh, see what, if he can't make plays with his, with his legs. I mean, that's the, that's the really good thing about his game right now is that he is probably the one guy, uh, that I would say can make you miss and can really blow a play open, uh, at, at, at any time. He's, he's just a really explosive player. I rewatched the Florida State game from last year, last night, and then saw some highlights again this morning as I was getting ready for a segment on Jordan Travis. But on the other side, I was looking at Jared Verse, and they just simply couldn't block him. It was just a nightmare. Now, that didn't include Emory Jones, who's now out there at right tackle. What's your confidence level in LSU's offensive line to to block one of the best pass rushers in college football? I think it's going to take a team effort. I mean, I think you're looking at a guy in Jared Verse who's very versatile. He's going to be a five, you know, top five, top ten pick next year uh, if, if things go his way this season. I just, you know, it, it, the fact that they're going to have a nice, uh, you know, depth of, of wealth of players, I think it's going to be really important. You know, not only Emery and uh, Miles Frazier on the right side, but also subbing in to Lance Hurd every once in a while. We'll see if any of those other guys like, uh, you know, DJ Chester finds his way into the rotation at some point, um, you know, just, just Bo borderline maybe. I mean, there's, there's a lot of options. I think LSU feels confident in with their offensive line. Um, but like you said, they didn't have Emory Jones last year in that game. Um, and I think Emory's probably one of the more improved offensive linemen on this roster. And he was really good last year. And I think he's poised to take another big step and, um, you know, it's, but it's going to take a team effort. I, I think that Will Campbell and him are going to be, uh, you know, r- really big fixtures in the SEC in terms of top offensive linemen. Uh, and this is a really good first matchup for those two on the edge. Chatting with Glenn West, go 24-7, talking Tigers and Knowles Sunday night from Orlando. Uh, let's flip it over. Uh, LSU's defense, you know that Florida State's got two really good wide receivers. You know that they've got a sixth-year quarterback. Where are you as we sit here on this LSU secondary? Um, I'm cautiously optimistic. I, I think that's probably the best way to put it. I, I think that there's, um, you know, uh, Zy Alexander's a guy that I think I had trust in. You know, he, I think, was probably the most consistent defensive back for you this this off this fall. Um, but, you know, look, they, they had some injuries that they had to overcome there as well. I mean, Greg Brooks missed a good chunk of fall camp. Uh, Major Burns was, was kind of coming back from injury as well. Uh, you know, they've moved Sage Ryan around a little bit this fall as well. That'll be a, a really interesting, you know, matchup to watch on, on his uh, on his when he's out there at outside corner and, and how much he plays nickel with Greg Brooks at nickel as well. Um, I, I'm – but I, I don't know what to expect out of the, out of the defensive back. I think that's probably the one area of concern that you, you have to have if you're LSU, um, because you know the, the 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 ideal way to get this game early is to kind of shut down the run, uh, make this more of a passing offense, and you know those guys in the back half are really going to have to step up for you if that's the case. So uh, I'm going to be very excited to see it. Uh, I don't know what to expect, but 
I do know that LSU has about five or six guys they feel really confident in, and those guys have to perform for you at a really good level on Sunday. Who's LSU's best pass rusher outside of Perkins? Um, I, I would say probably Savion Jones. I think he's probably been the most consistent for you. Uh, I do think Obia Gofu is a really interesting name to watch. Uh, Braden Swinson as well at that Jack linebacker spot. Um, but I, I've just been super impressed with Savion. He's put on some really good weight this offseason. Looks bigger, stronger, more physical around uh, offensive offensive tackles. And I think he's poised for a really nice season here uh, as kind of a starter uh, uh, for, 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 you know, kind of in that Ali Gay defensive end role. So I, I would say Savion is, is my pick. What's your biggest key and what's your pick? Yeah, so biggest key, I think, has got to be, um, you know, the offense just kind of uh, continuing what we saw during this fall. I thought that they were very consistent in moving the ball. I think this is going to be a pretty high-scoring game. Um, I have LSU uh, winning this one 33-30. I think it's going to come down to one or two plays, maybe a last-second Damian Ramos field goal. I know that would be kind of a, a just way <laughs> to kind of maybe put last year in the past, right? You know, so... Uh, but I, I do think that LSU comes out on top. I think that they have spent all offseason preparing for this matchup. I think those veterans on this team are hungry for this game. Um, and, and I just think that the, the offense is going to be what's going to have to carry you through most of this season. And those guys have to get off to a really good start for, for, for LSU to have a, a good chance with this one. Hey, thanks for watching Hunt on LSU. Before you get out of here, do us a couple of favors. Hit that like button. Leave your comments below and subscribe to the channel for all your fighting Tiger football talk. See you next time.